Hello friends, the topic of this video is blood supply of thyroid gland. Usually a long question is asked on thyroid gland, but sometimes you may be asked a short note on blood supply of thyroid gland. In that case, you have to write both the arterial supply and the venous drainage. Then you can also be asked clinical anatomy questions such as during thyroidectomy, why superior thyroid artery is ligated close to the gland whereas inferior thyroid artery is ligated away from the gland. This video will also include the lymphatic drainage of thyroid gland. Now let us just briefly revise the parts of thyroid gland. Here we can see this is the thyroid gland. It has got two lateral lobes and an isthmus which connects these lobes, the right lobe with the left lobe. I have described in detail the gross features of thyroid gland, the relations of thyroid gland and the related uh, applied anatomy in another video. I will put the link of that video in the description box. Let us begin with the arterial supply of thyroid gland. So here we can see this is the arch of aorta, this is brachiocephalic trunk, this is left common carotid and this is left subclavian artery. Here the brachiocephalic trunk on the right side divides into right common carotid and right subclavian artery. Now here we can see that the common carotid artery at the upper border of the thyroid cartilage it divides into external carotid and internal carotid arteries. Here we can see a branch of subclavian artery which is known as thyrocervical trunk. Okay, so now let us look at the arteries that supply thyroid gland. So first is the superior thyroid artery. This is a branch of uh, external carotid artery. In fact, the first branch, first anterior branch of external carotid artery. So it supplies upper two-third of the lobe and upper half of the isthmus. So upper two-third of the lobe and upper half of the isthmus will be supplied by superior thyroid artery, which is a branch of external carotid artery. The second artery that supplies thyroid gland is inferior thyroid artery. This is a branch of thyrocervical trunk. So we can see here thyrocervical trunk, which in fact is a branch of first part of subclavian artery. The two other branches of thyrocervical trunk they are the transverse cervical and suprascapular artery so thyrocervical thyrocervical so it gives one inferior thyroid artery and two arteries which will go to the posterior triangle of the neck that is transverse cervical and suprascapular artery so this is the uh, inferior thyroid artery it supplies lower one third of the lobe and lower half of the isthmus that is supplied by inferior thyroid artery sometimes we do have another artery which is known as thyroidema artery and this is a branch either of the brachiocephalic trunk or a direct branch from the arch of aorta. This is not always present. So there are two main arteries that supply thyroid gland, superior thyroid artery and inferior thyroid artery. Let us see the course and the branches of superior thyroid artery. So here, as I have already told you, we can see the origin of superior thyroid artery. This is the first anterior branch from external carotid artery. It descends down and it will give many branches to the surrounding structures. One of them can be seen piercing the thyrohyoid membrane. This is superior laryngeal artery which will supply larynx. And then it further descends down and reaches the apex or the upper pole of the thyroid gland. So after reaching the upper pole, it divides into an anterior branch and a posterior branch, which is light in color that you can see. So at the apex of lateral lobe, the superior thyroid artery divides into anterior and posterior branches. Now let us see the anterior branch. This is the anterior branch. This is going to run along the anterior border of the lobe of thyroid gland and then run along the superior border of the isthmus where it is going to anastomose with the same sim artery of the opposite side. So anterior branch anastomoses with its fellow of opposite side along the superior border of isthmus. The posterior branch which is light in color which we can see here that runs along the posterior border and will anastomose with the ascending branch of inferior thyroid artery. This is inferior thyroid artery and we can see here it is going it gives a branch which is known as ascending branch 
that is going to anastomose with the posterior branch of superior thyroid artery now one relation is very important to this artery that is the external laryngeal nerve so we can see here this is the vagus nerve and it has a branch known as superior laryngeal nerve which will divide into internal and external laryngeal nerve external laryngeal nerve we can see here is very close to the artery in its proximal part but when it reaches the apex when the artery reaches the apex of the thyroid gland the nerve that deviates and is slightly away from the artery so this relation is very important that is the proximal part of the superior thyroid artery it is very close to external laryngeal nerve inferior thyroid artery let's look at its course here so this is the inferior thyroid artery which is a branch of thyro cervical trunk which in turn is a branch of subclavian artery so it passes first upwards you can see it is for passing upwards then medially behind the carotid sheath and after that it is going to descend down so it will form a loop here right and the convexity is upward so first is ascends then passes medially and then descends and divides into four to five branches to supply the lower part of the lobe of the thyroid gland and the isthmus it also gives an ascending branch which we can see here and this is going to anastomose with the a posterior branch of superior thyroid artery which we have already seen now this nerve is also in very close relation with a nerve, branch of vagus so this is the vagus nerve of the left side we can see here and it is giving a branch here which is going back this branch is the recurrent laryngeal nerve so we can see here this recurrent laryngeal nerve this comes in very close relation to the inferior thyroid artery near the base of the gland but the artery in its proximal part is away from recurrent laryngeal nerve so this relation also has to be kept in mind that the near the base that is lower pole the artery that is inferior thyroid artery is very close to recurrent laryngeal nerve let us consider the venous drainage of thyroid gland but before that let us identify the main veins here so here we can see this is the left internal jugular vein this will be left subclavian vein they will join together to form the left brachiocephalic vein similarly on the right side this will be the right internal jugular vein the right subclavian vein they will join together to form right brachiocephalic vein the two brachiocephalic veins they will join together to form superior vena cava now here we can see these are the two lobes of the thyroid gland connected by the isthmus so let us see which uh, veins will drain thyroid gland so first pair of veins that we have is the superior thyroid vein this is will be arising at near the upper pole of the thyroid gland and will drain into internal jugular vein second we have small veins which will arise near the middle of the lateral lobe of the thyroid gland and they will also drain into internal jugular vein of the respective sides third set of veins we have these are known as inferior thyroid veins these are we can see here inferior thyroid veins they will be arising along the inferior border of the isthmus of thyroid gland and they will form a plexus in front of the trachea and will drain into left brachiocephalic veins so inferior thyroid veins drain into left brachiocephalic veins whereas the other two drain into internal jugular vein sometimes we have an additional vein which is known as vein of kocher and this will arise near the base of the thyroid gland lateral lobe and will also drain into internal jugular vein so these are the uh, three pairs usually of veins which drain the thyroid gland coming to applied aspect now during thyroidectomy when the superior and inferior thyroid artery they have to be ligated one has to be very careful so during thyroidectomy superior thyroid artery is ligated close to the thyroid gland why is it so what is the anatomical basis for this so here we can see this is the superior thyroid artery and this is external laryngeal nerve as i said earlier look at this the proximal part of the artery where it is taking origin that is very close to external laryngeal nerve when it reaches the upper pole right there the uh, nerve is deviated that goes away from the artery so that is the reason where, why the artery will be ligated close to the upper pole right because the nerve is further away from the artery so superior thyroid 
thyroid artery lies close to external laryngeal nerve in its proximal part and they diverge near the apex of the lateral lobe. Therefore, to avoid injury to external laryngeal nerve, superior thyroid artery should be ligated close to the upper pole or apex of thyroid gland. In case of inferior thyroid artery, it is ligated away from the thyroid gland. So, it should be ligated away from that. Why is it so? We can see here, this is the inferior thyroid artery and this is the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So, close to the base of the uh, lateral lobe of thyroid gland, they are very close to each other. Whereas, the proximal part of the artery is away from the nerve. So, Inferior thyroid artery is very close to the recurrent laryngeal nerve near the base of the thyroid gland and therefore to avoid injury to recurrent laryngeal nerve it should be ligated away from the base of thyroid gland. Lymphatic drainage of thyroid gland it is simple so from the upper part of the thyroid gland the lymph will drain either directly into the upper deep cervical group of lymph nodes. The deep cervical group of lymph nodes, they lie along internal jugular vein. So, either directly they will go or they will first drain into pre-laryngeal nodes and then into the upper deep cervical group of lymph nodes. The lymphatic drainage from the lower part of the thyroid gland that will either go directly into the lower deep cervical group of lymph nodes or it will first drain into pretracheal and paratra sorry, paratracheal group of lymph nodes and from there then it will go to the lower deep cervical group of lymph nodes. So ultimately it will all drain into the deep cervical group of lymph nodes. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and if you have not subscribed, please subscribe my channel so that I can put more such videos and if you want uh, the questions and answers in anatomy, all types of that, then visit the website that is anatomyqa.com. Thanks once again.